The time that my journey takes is long and the way of it long. I came out on the chariot of the first glimmer of light and pursued my voyage through the wildernesses of worlds, leaving my track on many a star and planet. It is the most distant course that comes nearest to thyself and that training is the most intricate which leads to the utter simplicity of a tune. The traveler has to knock at every alien door to come to his own and one has to wander through all the outer worlds to reach the innermost shrine at the end. My eyes strayed far and wide before I shut them and said, Here art thou. The question and the cry, O oh where, melt into tears of thousand streams and deluge the world with a flood of the assurance, I am. This place is slightly low and we will, our track is somewhere here. This distance is about 12 miles. 12 miles means about 25 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Okay, now this is So the lighter portion is the higher one? Vandalust. The burning Correct. desire to know the unknowns. These are the higher pain. The desire okay. which has now taken me to the remotest of the remote part of my country, India. This time around, my destination was the lower range of the northeastern part of the great Himalayas, or to be more precise, West Garo Hills, the land of myths and mysteries the land which is still on the threshold of the uncivilized and so-called civilized world. The land of one of the ancient most tribes of the world, the Achiks, famously known to the outer world as the Karos.
the Garos, who predominantly occupy the lower and the plainer areas of the western portion of the Indian state, Meghalaya, are one of the major tribes of that state, forming roughly 30% of its population. The Garos are of the Tibeto-Burman stock and form many sub-tribes of the Boro family. The Garos originally inhabited the hills of Tibet, but because of acute famine in the area, in the remote past, were compelled to seek greener pastures elsewhere. After long 40 years of traveling, they finally reached the fertile lands of the promised land, the present Garo Hills, thousands of years ago. Bibhav Sangma, the official guide from the government, who himself is a Garo, has accompanied us to a remote Garo village, Tabakri. It was a long journey from the town Thura, and so we started early. The areas inhabited by the Garos comprised of a number of independent cluster of villages, each cluster forming an a kingland. For centuries, the hilly areas which now form the Garo Hills district has remained divided between the various sub-tribes. These were the Athongs, Garaganchings, Chiboks, Rugas, Duwals, Machiduals, Machis, Matabengs, Avis, Chisaks, and the biggest and the most important of them all, the Ambings. The village we were heading towards belongs to the Ambings. But suddenly, I thought that my voyage had come to its end at the last limit of my power, that the path before me was closed, that provisions were exhausted and the time come to take shelter in a silent obscurity. But I find that thy will knows no end in me. And when old words die out on the tongue, new melodies break forth from the heart. And where the old tracks are lost, new country is revealed with its wonders.
at last we have reached the village Tabakri. The Nokma or the village head welcomed us. He is the headman of this village, village Dabakri. He is the head and chief of this village. Not the village, he is the landlord also. The people were very simple, and being a city dweller, it was a refreshing change to be in such a calm and serene place, far away from the hustle bustle of the modern day world. The Nokma took us to his house, the largest one in the village, and offered us chi bichi, and welcome drink made from fermented rice. He also offered us sada, the local cigarette made from maize leaves and some herbs. tobacco for uh, 80 rupees per kilo. The Garus have various forms of festivals and ceremonies and divine rituals that reflect their traditional beliefs. Their religion is not animistic but they believe that they are presided by a supreme God, the Creator. It is a monotheistic religion but with certain polytheistic elements of worship. It seems that though it was originally a consummate monotheism, it may have lapsed into a gross polytheistic ritualism in later stages of development. The main and the biggest festival of the Garos is Bangala or thanksgiving ceremony to God Missy Saljong and Goddesses Minmakiri Rokimi. Bangala, which is the most significant ceremony in the Garo cycle of Jhum cultivation, considered an absolute necessity. It comes after the harvest is over, generally in the months of October or November every year. It is a send-off ceremony to Goddess Rokimi and Lord Missy Saljong, who, after the harvest is over, want to go back to their own homelands. Somewhere in the great oceans of the eastern skies, in the abode of the clouds. Requests are also made to the gods and goddesses to come again and bless the land and the tomb cultivation the following year. <laughs> when all the preparations for the festival are over, Nokma fixes the date and accordingly informs the villagers. The young boys and girls get themselves new clothing and other necessaries for this function in order to look prettier and smarter. Everybody seems to be excited as the celebration for Vangala festival draws near. That reflects in their faces the sense of happiness and purity. And by this time they forget all their hard days at work and are ready to celebrate to the fullest.
On the day prior to the main festival, the dwelling houses of the people, both outside and inside, are to be decorated with wanchi, or a white paste made out of rice powder, to mark this occasion. They even apply this paste to color themselves. Language does have one characteristic that sets it apart from other elements of culture. The Garos speak a totally different dialect from the other neighboring tribes such as Khasis and Jaintyas. The Garo language belongs to a subgroup of the tibeto burman language family which is known as Bodo. In the poetry such as Daroa and Dani, which narrates myths and the names of ancestors of numerous objects like squirrels, monkeys and domestic fowl, we come across the Garu's concept of the earth and worldview. Their answer to the basic questions of life their belief in the sacredness of life, belief in immortality of the soul, and what happens in the afterlife may be gathered from these sources. Another custom that has determined the very fabric of their society and its economy is a practice of the matrilineal system of inheritance. Though the Garos are more flexible in their practice, as it is not so rigidly followed, that the youngest daughter should inherit the ancestral landed property. The selection of the heiress depends on the parent's choice. The origin of matrilineal is narrated in Achik Katta, the traditional oral sources. By traditional, we mean that which is transmitted or handed down from generation to generation, from teacher to student. This we see in the Nokpante, or the bachelor's dormitory system of the Garos, where all-round training is imparted to the young men. This is bachelor's dormitory. It is all one, but they are going to construct a new one. All the bachelors of the village gather here and sleep 
night, during night time. This dormitory is constructed by the villagers for the purpose of the bachelors. Girls are not allowed. Only, female, only male, males are allowed in this dormitory and girls are not allowed. If anyone found, any ladies found in this dormitory entering will be punished by the headman. Here, they acquire knowledge in the fields of art, craft, carving, music, culture, physical fitness, warfare, defense, medicine, agriculture, and also moral standards and etiquette. The music of the Garos is untouched by grammar, untouched by musical signs. It is a music which burst out of people. Where this had their origin and where they flow is equally unknown. What is known is that wherever and whenever hearts beat, there is music. I know not how thou singest, my master. I ever listen in silent amazement. The light of thy music illumines the world. The life breath of thy music runs from sky to sky. The holy stream of thy music breaks through all stony obstacles and rushes on. My heart longs to join in thy song, but vainly struggles for a voice. I would speak, but speech breaks not into song, and I cry out baffled. Thou hast made my heart captive in the endless meshes of thy music, my master. The day was over. We headed back towards the town, Thura. The village chief has invited us to 100 drums, Wangala festival on the very next day. The fundamental concept and the basic principles of Mangala festival, the traditional culture of the Garos, stood the test of time for generations past. Whereas, in this age of modern civilization, because of the impact of foreign cultures and religions, the traditional customs and practices of the Garos are disappearing and run the risk of vanishing from society. Hence, the necessity of preserving, protecting, and promoting the cultural identity of the Garos has become the need of the hour. Therefore, with this end in view, a group of modern intellectuals, with the help of the state government, decided to organize the Wangala festival on modern lines. A group of 30 
dancers with 10 drums form a contingent. with 100 drums make a 100 drums Bangala festival which was first celebrated on the December of 1976 at Asanang, the headquarter of Romram block, now under Veskaro Hills district, Mikhalaya. Part of the Bangala festival is known as Rugala or Thanksgiving ceremony or communion with God. In this function, Nokma himself takes part in each and every rite and ritual of the ceremony. This festival is also known as Nokma Wangala. During this time, the beating of special type of drum, known as Kram, with Nagatik, continues till Rugala is over. Then, rice beer is served to each and everyone. The function of Rugala ceremony was accompanied with chanting of series of incantations. The performances of rites and rituals stop for a while for food and drink and are again ready for dancing, singing and merrymaking in no time. And they will continue for the rest of the day, especially the young boys and girls. That means you will get a dog meat here. Cook dog meat. 20 rupees. And to test? Uh, ox in this time? Yes. Yeah. Dog, ox. Any movable thing. You mean, any, the, you mean the insects also? Yes. Any movable thing. They eat. The indigenous songs known as Ahaya exchanges the views and ideas and expresses one's love and gratitude towards his or her neighbor. aspect of music and dances traditionally associated as part and parcel of the Vangala festival may be traced back from the days of Garo mythology. Tatara Rabuga, the creator created the earth and all living beings within eight days, including human beings. On the ninth day, the creator took rest and directed all the beings, including lesser gods and goddesses, to proceed to the land of the creator. This gathering is called Druva Vanbola or Vangala by the Garo forefathers. All were present there except humankind and everyone else received blessings with certain instructions from the Creator. 
who imparted duties to each and every one. Man was supposed to be there because they were the most important of all creatures. Naturally, Asi and Malja, who were supposed to represent humankind at the gathering, failed to receive the blessings and necessary instructions from the Creator. Because they were cursed by God Missy Saljong on their way to attend the ceremony and suffered misfortunes. Asi was killed by a tiger and Malja lost in water. The term Asi Malja is a significant taboo in the life of the Garos. It is said that of living beings, it was a water serpent that was the first to hold the Wangala festival. And that was naturally an underwater event. The frogs followed their example, being the first to bring the festival up on land. Human beings followed much later, when Bangala was already accepted and well established among plants and animals as an effective way of pleasing the gods of rain and thunder. The Vangala dance they learned from the wagtail bird. Their musical instruments were an imitation of the sound the wind makes when blowing through the bamboo holes. And as the reruma plant's leaves waved and flapped, so the women folk of the garos gestured and clapped. Thus music was born on earth and dancing started by human beings for the first time. Since then, music has become the food of love and dancing the way of life to the tribal garos. I have had my invitation to this world's festival and thus my life has been blessed. My eyes have seen and my ears have heard. It was my part at this fest to play upon my instrument and I have done all I could. Now I ask, has the time come at last when I may go in and see thy face and offer thee my silent salutation. A newcomer from the city will probably think of all this eating, drinking and merrymaking as one ton festivity. But actually, these drum beats and flow of rice beer have a deep connection with their economic and social lives. The Garos truly believe they are able to evoke the blessings and goodwill of gods through their ceremonies. Wangala holds a central place in their faith and is indispensable for any understanding of their culture. Vandalust, now I'm heading east. The land of the Khasis. But that's a different story to be told somewhere else, some other time.
Thou hast made me known to friends whom I knew not. Thou hast given me seats in homes not my own. Thou hast brought the distant near and made a brother of the stranger. I am uneasy at heart when I have to leave my accustomed shelter. I forget that there abides the old in the new and that there also thou abidest. Through birth and death in this world or in others. Wherever thou leadest me, it is thou the same, the one companion of my endless life. Whoever linkest my heart with bonds of joy to the unfamiliar. When one knows thee, then alien there is none, then no door is shut. Oh, grant me my prayer that I never lose the bliss of the touch of the one in the play of the many.